Again, this is me on my farm again. So we're here at Laurel Farms. I'm very sorry that I haven't any time to edit and stuff like that. But now I'm here in the morning, checking up on the plants. As I've done recent videos, I'm gonna be showing you a little bit of changing in the plants according to what I've done earlier on in the first video. So here, I'm gonna be showing you the cabbages which I had to prune, which is to take off the, the dead leaves. You can see that they're showing a little bit of improvement here. Also, <coughs> my tomatoes, I think, and that's the problem with the strings. See how this string gets slacked? That's actually the, the problem. So if you got this problem, usually you can just take a spoon and just keep it there until I come to deal with it. So, so far everything looks great and as I can see I have some very nice powerful tomatoes here and the reason for these is because I had grow them a little bit I can see I, I recommend this type of growing I've seen it recently on YouTube and other platforms so I'm gonna say like, I recommend it very highly because it gives you more depthness of earth. Meaning, while they may have a bed that might just give you six inches, you know, you can have a bed that can give you 12 inches or more, you know. So the roots get enough chance to at least go down and go down and go down and go down and have enough soil to hold that water inside of it. So I'll be showing you around the line today. So these are the cabbages which I've done. And these are an excel of tomatoes. So I can see like this tomatoes is actually on its peak. So I gotta start tying it up. Also, I'm gonna be showing you. I've done some cabbages recently and I'm saying that they are quite small, but still. I've given them the fertilizer and actually uh, as I said I actually give my younger plants a heavy dose of fertilizer I've given them one already and now we have getting some good rainfall so I actually timed very well so the, the more water they get right now they're gonna develop faster and they are looking pretty good I mean, that's the only problem here but that's not really a big problem so all what I have planted, I haven't seen any die as yet, and I have to give them another dose of fertilizer also. So I'm going to show you the fertilizer which I use. So I'm going to be doing a video to show you guys like how many fertilizer I put for a young plant, and why I give my fertilizer in the early stage, why I give it so strong, because if you got a soil that is not recommended enough i gotta clean up that and i'm gonna tell you also don't leave your your beds with weeds that are hanging i'm just a little bit busy these days i can't even get to do things but at least i have to get that clean so as i was saying if your soil doesn't have enough strength to start your plant which means your soil may be facing some types of i can say fungicides or bacteria in the soil and your plant cannot get a head start then I'm gonna say the bacteria tends to kill the younger plants why because it is a very young plant and it doesn't have much of the system to fight against the disease as how human body which children really works so what I really do as I said I give them a strong loser fertilizer and afterwards I put them into the soil and give them enough water as possible. So the fertilizer will help boost the plant that's one. It's gonna throw it off the ground and it's gonna also help it in rooting aid because fertilizer really need water. And I don't know if anybody has noticed that. The stronger you give the fertilizer, the more water you give the plant and there's like hydroponics. The fertilizer in the water and the plant absorbs the fertilizer 
and then it drinks the water one time. So it always gets continuous water, so it grows very quick, very healthy. So I'm saying that if you want to start your plants and you find your ground is not that good, you can buy a packet of the powdery, which is a fine um, 20, 20, 20 fertilizer. It's going to be in a blue salt fertilizer. And you can mix that, not too, too strong. I mean, not too strong, but according to the tub you're using, I'm going to be showing you in my video when I'm going to be fertilizing these by tomorrow. Please, Lord, I'm going to be showing you how I really does it and what amount of fertilizer I use for every fertilizer. Because I've taken them out young recently because really I wanted to really feel back here seeing that these cabbages up there are going to be going anytime soon so i actually wanted to have something in replace so while i'll be while these are going to be coming up i have to also rip off this bed and clean it up and put cabbages here also so i'm going to be doing cabbages from that section go right up there and i have this bed on the corner of here and also i'll be doing here are cabbages also because I find the soil here cabbages don't tend to like plenty of water and if by chance I doesn't have a sufficient market the soil is very it's well drained so I don't have to worry about soggy soil and my cabbages getting too much of water and the rotting and stuff like that it's a very safe practice for me two cabbages here also my tomatoes it's very good and Pretty well, I'm going on with it, so I need to be doing some tying. Like tomorrow, please the Lord, I have to come tie here, clean up the piece of bed I show you with overhanging of bushes and stuff like that. And also, I'm gonna be coming with one more thing to show you guys, which is I'm gonna be doing some aquaponic very soon. I'm working on my water system, and as you can know, the water the river is really close to me, so. There is a little seep of water passing through a portion of the land and I see it was a very good use to put it into action. So I'm going to be doing that. Uh, maybe I can give you guys a little show. Maybe I can show you guys a little one time. So that's just here. Yeah, sorry about that. I mean it's farming. It's agriculture. I get to walk through bushes. My miss falls and all this stuff. So here is my my bed of uh, gingers, and I've done it so for a for a specific purpose because the gingers doesn't really get enough water, and the next thing I don't have enough time. So what I do. A plant doesn't it doesn't require or like it doesn't really say how many and what type of water you can give a plant so the reason why I'm saying that is because you can use your your tap water you can use your sink water you can use your dishwashing water you can use your your the, the water you finish wash your clothes with all these can be determined as water to give to your plant because the plant doesn't really absorb the soap from it, it absorbs the water from it. So hence for the reason I'm using, this is the water that comes from our sink. And I've looked into it and it's been just chewing out, wasting. So I decided to let it fall shoot into the ginger. And I think they're coming on pretty well. And the ginger is going to get the amount of water it needs. And then hopefully I think that things are going to be in place so what I may have to do I may have to cut a slide drain on the top of there so that the water can come down and settle inside and take it away and take its time and sip through the bed and everyone is going to be getting enough so back to what I will have to show you guys so first of all as you can see this drains here I did this drain because I really wanted to find out if the water didn't settle there to if the water is actually running here so here is it I've done a little structure here 
and that's what it's like so I've done that and now the water is going to rise I need enough water so it's going to be coming up all the way to that bamboo here there's a bamboo and I put a piece of bag this bag can last for at least four years and if I see any sign of rotage in the bag then I'm going to have to there is not going to be much work to do here I will have to break my whole stuff again I will only have to get the other bag put it over it and sink it in the, into the soil so that's what it's going to be doing so when it finishes I'm going to show you what plan I really have for it so it's a water that's passing from the river I don't know where it comes from but I can see a little through the stone there it's coming out from there there's a little movement of the water coming out through there and I decided to use it and this piece of land here which I haven't worked for some time I'm planning to come with a nice structure to do aquaponics but I'm using the crayfishes and how we growing my seasonings in it so hopefully I'm thinking that by God's grace I'll get through because I'll, I have the water I have the most important stuff here and also I already have a plan for the ground here so I'm going to be coming back with you with, with the other video to show you how my aquaponics setup has started from a gravity flow of a little stream of water so you're going to be seeing from me again soon yeah